Hi everyone, welcome to Wiggly Cooking with Becky. Today we are going to be making some keto cake mix cookies, keeping it very, very low carb. I will say, even though the name is Keto Cake Mix Cookies, cookies and I will put the, the link down below, it's truly, truly a low carb type of cookie, a healthy living type of cookie. Um, it's a lazy or dirty keto. It's definitely not a clean keto because we're using this, which is a big no-no with a lot of people who are into clean, um, into clean keto. So there is, I'm just checking to see if it is gluten-free. I did not check. I will, I'm gonna check before I do um, the stuff on the other side, the, the nutrition. So you're going to need for this recipe is one keto cake mix, the classic yellow, that's what you're gonna need, two eggs, a half of a cup of chocolate chips, I buried mine a little bit, um, a half a cup of melted butter, a teaspoon of vanilla, and then I am going to add one other ingredient and do one other switch, which I'll explain why later. This is just when you want to have cookies and you don't have a ton of time, you can make it quick. So here we go. In this bowl, I have the cake mix. To that, I am adding melted butter. So we're going to do a trick later because it's melted. It is not softened. Okay. I am going to take two eggs. This is one bowl cooking, which I also like, and you don't even need a beater or a blender. You literally can just mix it with a fork. So super, super easy. If you hear the cat meowing, I apologize. I have not picked up my daughter from school yet. So she is currently upstairs alone. Okay, a teaspoon of vanilla. Now this is where I'm going to add an ingredient that is not listed. Xanthan gum. I am going to add between a quarter and a half, it's up to you. A half is going to make it more chewy, a quarter is going to make it less, less chewy. So I think I'm going to do like a quarter and a smidge. Or a heaping quarter. <laughs> you like that? A heaping quarter. And I'm literally going to sift it all around because I want it to get everywhere. Xanthan gum will uh, make anything chewy without adding the carbs. So we are going to just mix this really quickly. It's not in the recipe, but if you like a chewier cookie when you're baking low carb, keto, paleo, anything like that, diabetic friendly because of the because this is still sugar-free, so this is diabetic friendly, all that kind of stuff. Um, it tends to be more dry. And with cookies, a trick is just to add a little bit of xanthan gum and it brings the chewy factor back out. And then there's one other trick I'm gonna do. But you'll see, that's mixed. That did not take long. It does, most cake mixes I don't think take too long to get mixed. So, at this point, I'm going to add a half, it says a half a cup of chocolate chips. Now, I did fill this about a half a cup away. I did do some chocolate chips, but I also did some white chocolate. I'm using the brand Lily Sugar Free, which uses stevia as its source of sweetness. And I, I just didn't want only chocolate. I even debated adding nuts to this too, just for fun. But I just ended up doing these two because my daughter won't eat the cookies if they have nuts. But a good nut in here with white chips, do half the white chips and do half macadamia nuts and you'll have a low carb macadamia nut cookie. So this is where I'm going to stop with the directions. I will link the directions, but I'm putting on a pause at this step. If you do not want a super chewy cookie, you like it crispier or more cake-like, then you are not going to add the um, xanthan gum and you're not gonna do this next step. I want a more chewy cookie. So what I'm going to do now, 
I've already added the xanthan gum to make it chewier. I'm going to put this in the refrigerator. 30 minutes, 45 minutes, up to an hour. So it just depends to your liking. I have to go get my daughter from school. So when I get home, I will preheat the oven and cook. So it'll, for me, it's gonna be about 45 minutes. Here's the reason. When you use melted butter in cooking and you immediately start baking the cookie, your butter's already melted. So it's gonna brown, it's gonna brown faster and it's gonna have more of a crunchy outside and a drier inside. I want the gooey factor in the middle. So in order to make it gooey, you want that butter to kind of re-solidify and get cold again, except that it's mixed throughout. So it's as if it has not started the cooking process. We're bringing it back to its cold state. Then once we start to cook it, because it hasn't melted through the batter at all, we can use the same cooking time, but it'll have a chewier effect. Just a little trick in case you didn't know that. So we're gonna stick these in the fridge and let them chill. Hmm. There I go. I will join you on the other side when we uh, put them onto the pan and we're gonna do that in a different way too. And I'll see you in just a little bit after they're nice and chilled. Okay, so what I did is I chilled it for about 45 minutes. That's how long it took me to go and get back. The oven is preheated to 350. Then I lined the paper or the pan with parchment paper and I used a one inch cookie scoop and I scooped them all out. From here, they are all exactly the same size. I left this one round so that you can hopefully see that it's higher and different. Once you have scooped them all out, you want to press it down. Think about uh, when you go to the, used to go to the store and you would buy the peel and bakes back in the days, the good old Nestle peel and bake, that's what you're doing. So you're just pressing it down a little bit. And then from here, you are going to bake for 10 to 12 minutes. Once again, if you chose to follow the recipe through and you want it crunchier, 10 to 12 minutes. If you are doing my trick, which was chilling it, adding the extra xanthan gum, I'm gonna set mine for eight, slightly under. Mine's probably gonna be more like eight to 10. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be watching the edges. When the edges start to get golden and the middle is almost set, that's when I'm gonna pull them. And then I'll let them sit for three to four minutes to solidify and then I'll transfer them onto a baking sheet. So that's what I'm gonna do because I'm going for chewy. All right, uh, let me put these in and I'll go over the nutrition facts. So once again, the oven is preheated at 350. And I'm also gonna turn them halfway through just for even cooking. Okay, pretty awesome information facts. I did uh, check, so the Duncan Hines Keto Cake Mix is gluten-free, and I also checked the sweeteners on it, and so it is totally diabetic friendly because it uses a blend of erythritol, allulose, and stevia, and our chips use stevia. So this recipe is truly low carb, it is truly diabetic friendly, gluten-free, healthy living, but in the keto category, it's gonna be lazy or dirty because of the tapioca starch. I even went in to see what it was. Um, with that said though, uh, one it makes a total of 30 cookies uh, with the one inch cookie scoop and then just press down a little bit. So each cookie is a serving. Okay, so 30 servings total. Calories, 53. My afternoon snack is 250 calories, so I could have or five cookies. I'm not going to, but I could. So 53 calories, total fat 5.1, uh, sodium and cholesterol, those are listed. Okay. 2.8 total carbohydrates. Uh, fiber is 1.4, which gives us a net carb of 1.1. 1.1. I love that. And 0.8 protein. But like I said, this is a snack. So Get your protein in your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I probably will do two for a snack because that's 106 calories and then I'll do something else. But two cookies and they're gonna be Chips Ahoy size, 
but better for you and a lot healthier for you. So we'll be back on the other side and I'll show you the finished product. All right, so the cookies are done and oh my goodness, they look amazing. They absolutely, they're just so light and fluffy and they are big. Here's my plate. I have two on here. I wanted to show you what it looked like broken open. It's even falling apart. Let's try it. I'm not so angry when I do that. Mm. Maybe you can have four or five after all. I don't forget. Super easy, no blender needed. Those are great. And I'll tell you if you love a chewy cookie, do it the way that I said, a heaping fourth on the xanthum and chill that dough. And I will tell you, it took me 11 minutes. So I'll tell you that on mine, but it is nice and soft and chewy. Enjoy, and I'll see you next time. Bye.